fast lane. F -f Bottles every night, whatever you like, cause I do things. And you know my niggas keep that thing Woo! on the side, case a nigga wanna act strange. Act strange. But this ain't about me, girl, it's all about you, and I ain't just running game. Running game. I ain't running game. Ooh, that's that 2 a.m. by Adrian Marcel. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite, also known as King Flex, also known as Tariq Nasheed. And I'm ready to chop up game in this bitch. We're going to chop up some real good game on today's show. We're going to have people call in. The number is 818-850-5404. That's the number to call in. And we're going to chop up some real good game on today's show. We're going to talk about what I call aggressive submissiveness in men. And I'll explain what that means after these very quick messages, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll be right back. Jazzy Hair, it offers the finest quality in virgin Brazilian hair extension products that allow individuals to have that full body of hair that they've always wanted. Their hair is 100% unprocessed and it's top of the line and they have great customer service and fast delivery. Check out their website at jazzyhair.com. That's J-A-Z-E-E hair.com or hit them on Instagram at Jazzy Hair or on Facebook at Jazzy Hair or call them at 832-901-901. 2603. K-Soldier, the t-shirt brand inspired by ancient mysteries and modern style. Sign up for their t-shirt subscription and get a new exclusive shirt delivered every month automatically. Every shirt comes with a magazine that doubles as a poster which describes the story and the history behind the design and the detail. It also comes with free stickers. Sign up for the t-shirt subscription right now. Tariq Radio listeners use the coupon code KFLEX and get 50% off on your first month. That's Case. Ultra.com. Again, that's CaseUltra.com. You are now tuning in to the king of games, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize. All day, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tariq Elite Radio Show. And I'm your host, Mr. Tariq Elite, also known as Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in on this wonderful, beautiful day today. Don't forget, y'all, Hidden Colors 3 will be in theaters June 26th. It's going to be a two-day event. Most cities is going to be that Thursday, June 26th. A couple of cities is going to be June 27th. I know in Chicago, it's going to be June 27th. Also in Atlanta, it's going to be June 26th and June 27th. But in all the other cities, it's going to be that Thursday, June 26th. So the cities that Hidden Colors 3 will be in will be in Dallas, Los Angeles, Oakland, Chicago, Atlanta, Philly, D.C., and New York, and Detroit. All right, and you can go to HiddenColorsFilm.com, and we'll have all the theaters and dates. We're getting all of that confirmed before we put everything up, but that will be up later on this week when we get everything confirmed, ladies and gentlemen. Hidden Colors 3 is going to be a beast. It's going to be a doozy, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Let's see who we got on the phone. We got a lot of folks calling here. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, this is Ronnie from Pennsylvania. Hey, what? This is Tariq. This is Tariq. What's your name? My name's Ronnie. Ronnie or Lonnie? Uh, Ronnie with an R. Okay, Ronnie. So what's on your mind, Ronnie? Wow, well, I'm so happy. I got you. I can't believe it. Um, I just wanted to know, why is it that a lot of younger Black guys seem to be happy with um, not not working, um, just being on getting government assistance and not really trying to make a good life for themselves. Is it because um, they just lack motivation, or is it just because um, of the society? You know how they basically made the black man feel like they're worth nothing because it just seems like a lot of younger guys that I went into they just don't seem like they're motivated. Okay, so you said there's a lot of guys on government assistance. What kind of government assistance can guys get? Well, I'm, I'm not. I just I'm just saying like I know guys that are really talented that could do so many things, and instead of that. They're just happy 
government assistance. And like, I, well, I just don't understand. And I, and I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm agreeing with you a little bit, but the whole government assistance thing, I just want you to be very clear on what government oh. assistance can a dude get. What what government assistance are you, are you talking about? Okay. Um, well, I have a couple of friends that are very talented um, as far as like in music. I, wait, 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 wait. I understand that you keep saying that you know people who are talented. I'm asking you a very specific question. What type of government assistance are dudes on? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, some of them are on Section 8. And but dudes like, can't get Section 8. What, what, dudes can't get Section 8 unless they're, like, they uh, unless they're handicapped or they have some kind of disability. But dudes okay. generally... Maybe they're, maybe they're claiming... Can you get, I'm just asking a question because I didn't think you could either. That's why I'm a little confused when you tell me they're on Section 8. They must, they must be like, claiming some kind of disability. I think that's the only way a dude can get Section 8. Um, okay. that, that's what I'm assuming. Or he's just living off a chick on government assistance. You feel yeah, thank you for clarifying that because I, I just found that very odd because I'm thinking how can a man go on Section 8 unless... Now, can you go on Section 8 if you have a mental disability? Yeah, yeah. if you go down there acting crazy or claiming crazy or some kind of disability, I think dudes can get on it that way, and that might be a hustle. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, I was trying to clarify that because I just didn't understand how a man, no matter what race, could get on Section 8. Um, unless there was some type of mental disability or um, something along that line. Right, so, right. Well, um, it, it, uh, yeah, a lot of dudes out here, and I'm talking about that today, a lot of um, brothers have taken a very submissive, subservient position in society because a lot, right. a lot of these brothers out here were raised by single mothers, especially a lot of brothers under the age of 48. They were raised yeah. by single mothers. And that shit started mm -hmm. right after 1965. And yeah. that single mother mentality has been embedded into these guys because that's all they know. They think like a single black female in the hood, unfortunately. Yeah. So all of their yeah, actions. Yeah, it's so sad. Yeah. It, it just makes me, it breaks my heart to see it because, mm. like I said, I know three people. They are so talented. It, it, it's unbelievable. In fact, one of the guys I know has recorded several albums, and I'm I'm trying to figure out why he's always telling me he's oh I'm on Section Eight. And in fact, I'm in the medical field, and he asked he, he lives um, out of state, not in Pennsylvania. He's asked me several times if I could have him come up here, go to our emergency room because he's trying to claim some type of mental. <laughs> not mental, medical problem or something right. to get money from the government for that. And I'm just thinking, what what's going on with our brothers? I mean, this I don't understand. It's the single mother mentality. See, the thing is, these niggas, mm -hmm. they can't go out and get pregnant like a hood rat. Right. They can't go and get somebody to knock them up and get food stamps in Section 8. So they got to do the same hustle, but in another way. They got to go play yeah. crazy. They got to go fake a disability, uh, act incompetent, and that's how they can get the Section 8 and the food stamps and the general relief. But again, that's that mm -hmm. hood rat, single mother submissive mentality that's been implanted in the minds of a lot of these brothers out here. And that's something that yeah. uh, in order for us to progress, we're going to have to leave those cats behind or cats are going to have to yeah. leave that mentality behind. Behind. Either, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm so worried. I have a, I'm a single parent. My son's father passed away six months ago, and my son is 13, and I'm so concerned. I'm on him all the time, but I'm so concerned. You know, I just was telling him today that I don't want him to end up like that. It's absolutely. Just worry, I, I'm so worried about his future. Right. Now, um, now are you, are you an African? You now, are you, wait, let me ask you this. Are you an African-American woman? What are you? Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm African-American. Everyone okay. tells me that. But right. yes, I'm, I'm African-American. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. So what you tell your son, you, you t what you have to do, it, it, try to get your son 
in some type of sports activity or just activity where he can interact with with some real strong brothers, community centers, karate, boxing. Just get him around some brothers where he can get some of that masculine energy. So yeah, that he, he can... needs that so bad. I mean, I just, I just, I thank you so much for that advice because I, I just don't want him to end up like a little. I hate to say use this terminology a little bit. Well, that's that's real uh, talk. That's real talk. <laughs> that's real talk. Um, you know, I I happen to be almost fifty years old. Um, I'm I, I'm a professional. Um, medical person. Yes, indeed. So it's not like we, we don't live, you know, in a economically um, depressed area. We live in a very good area of Pennsylvania. Yeah. That's not the point. It, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing for my son because I have all kinds of friends, all type of friends from all walks of life. And I, I, the ones that I was just referring to, I don't want my son to end up like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you got to get some brothers in that young man's life because, again, you can do the best you you can. But all if Mm -hmm. all he sees and if all he's around is feminine energy, it's inevitable that he's going to get those thought patterns. And those thought patterns don't work for a black boy. It doesn't. I work know. For I know. You're right. You're so right on that. Exactly. You're so right. Yes, Drake. indeed. So, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this on the whole show, actually. So that's right on time oh, with the thank topic. Thank you. I'm, I'm about. so glad that I was on topic. Yes, indeed. But I've been wanting to ask you that for a long time, and I knew that you would give me some good answers. Yes, indeed. I call it what a lot of these dudes. It's what I call aggressive submissiveness, where these mm-hmm. dudes out here. It's natural for a man to be aggressive and to be outgoing. But the thing is, we have Mm -hmm. men out here who are aggressive and outgoing about submissive things. A dude out here going for Section 8 and you're aggressively pursuing Section 8 as a man is aggressive submissiveness. You ain't supposed to be Mm -hmm. out here fighting to get a fucking Section 8 voucher. You dig? Yeah. You're fighting to be submissive. uh, It's awful. I just, I just. It just breaks my heart because when I came up, I had my dad and my, both my mother and my father. My father took me to Black Panther meetings regularly. Um, and all kinds of, my father was just wonderful. Yes, um, he exposed me to so many things. And, you know, thank goodness, you know, unfortunately he doesn't live close to me. Um, but I try to get my son around him as much as I possibly Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Um, but I just, I just feel so, it, it just breaks my heart to see I such beautiful brothers wanting to be on Section 8. I just have such a problem with that. Exactly. Well, I'm going to talk about that today. But hey, thank you for the call, young lady. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. So yeah, let let me just get into topic right now because this sister brought up a very good point. And again, this is what I want to talk about on today's show. Aggressive submissiveness in men. Because that's the problem we have out here. And the single mother mentality that's been implemented in these men that's the chicken coming home to roost we're getting a lot of submissive skinny jean moist section 8 living niggas out here and that's just not acceptable now y'all know that Hidden Colors 3 is coming out and we're getting real deep and we touch on a lot of this stuff in Hidden Colors 3 and even we, we put the trailer out and we got some of the bullshit dusty hotep niggas complaining like they always do not everybody but every time we put out hidden colors we always get the dudes talking about why don't y'all put hidden colors out for free why y'all gotta charge money for it we need this for free now forget about all the production and the hundreds of thousands of dollars that have gone into it and all the man hours and just the time and labor forget about all that these ho ass niggas With that single mother, Section 8 mentality, always hollering about, we want it for free. And these are grown-ass dudes. The reason why they're doing that is because they grew up in a household where they saw a woman talking about, somebody needs to give me something. Where are my food stamps? My WIC check is late. They grew up seeing that, and these dudes, they've internalized that, and they still have that same aggressive submissive mentality where they are loud and they're complaining dudes because it's natural for a man to be aggressive but you're being aggressive about something that's submissive my brother Umar Johnson who's in Hidden Colors 3 he's been in all the Hidden Colors film 
My brother Umar is starting a school. He's out here campaigning right now to get funding to get a school. I think the school is in Virginia. He's trying to get his own school. And I'm, I'm, I, I want everybody to help my brother get that popping because that's a wonderful idea. And I was looking at Umar's page today. Somebody um, linked up some videos of Umar talking about his school. And I saw a couple of comments and I, I shook my head when I saw one comment. One comment was like, well, Umar... You need to holler at some of these celebrities or you need to holler at one of them rich Africans overseas to give you the money. And I shook my damn head. It's always some dusty section eight nigga talking about we need to get the money from this person. It's always get that celebrity or that celebrity here instead of you getting up and getting with other people and getting it done yourselves. We don't need the basketball players and the football players and the rich African, the unknown rich. We don't need all, none of that stuff. We just all need to get on the same page and just get stuff done. See, the thing is when it comes time to getting something done, that's progressive in the black community, all of a sudden niggas get on this old moist, feminized submissive bullshit and uh, these are dudes and I don't blame the women I don't blame the women I blame the guys because see women will follow the lead of the guys it's a lot of these brothers out here with that feminized submissive mentality that's throwing a wrench in the game and then dudes start you know they, they get on that whole fake hotep bullshit but it's really a, a, a way to mask the submissiveness that's a way to mask the feminized mentality that they have they got on a thong and a matching kufi you dig what i'm saying you 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 moist and conscious nigga your thong matches your kufi fake niggas we got to get off that we got to get on the same page where we as a community can just handle things and just not make a big deal out of it. See, the thing is, people hit me up all the time about coming to their cities to do lectures. And I, I have a set rate. And I don't really falter on that rate. I've been getting the same rate for years. That's just my rate. That's what I get. Now, every now and then, cats will ask me to come to their city. And I tell them the rate. And they're like... We're going to see if we can raise the money. We can see if we can do this. We can see if we can do that. And even when we have screenings, because a lot of times people will hit me up about screenings for hidden colors. And the screening fee is not that much at all. But when it comes to even getting that, cats start giving me a bunch of excuses about what they're going to do. Okay, that's the screening fee. Well, we're going to talk to the Chamber of Commerce, and then we're going to go down to the church, and then we're going to try to get some money from the state, and then we'll try to get some money from... I'm like, you niggas can't get... You can't get a few hundred dollars because to screen hidden colors at certain locations is only a few hundred dollars. But the thing is, these same niggas, and I'm using the word nigga very literally, will be at the club popping fucking bottles like it's nothing. When it comes to bullshit, we magically find all the money we need. When it comes to utter bullshit, Money just magically pops up. When it comes to getting candy paint with Ronald McDonald painted on the side of your car, niggas magically got the money for that. When it comes to popping bottles and getting Ciroc and table service at the club, dudes magically have money for that. When it comes to giving some hydrogel, little musty stripper, your whole paycheck, you got money for that. When it comes to black bike weekend or other nigger festivities that's per, not progressive niggas magically got the money for that but when it comes to doing something progressive in the community all of a sudden we gotta think about how to raise the money we gotta sell fish sandwiches we gotta beg the church we gotta beg the chamber of commerce we gotta figure out it's, it's this whole door the explorer find the map find the money mentality when it comes to doing something progressive and i blame dudes i'm putting the onus on the brothers out here
because I get a lot of that from the brothers. A lot of times when I go to cities for lectures, a lot, a lot of the people who bring me in are women. A lot of the people who bring me into these cities are women. Females put it together. They go to the school, put together a proposal or whatever. And they get the money. They get it popping. They send me a check. I'm there. Sisters be on it. It's the brothers be on that old mush mouth shit. Well, oh, man. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a car wash and then we're going to have a... Uh, uh, all right, brother, just call me when you get the shit done. But again, we have a lot of brothers out here with this aggressive submissiveness. And again, we got to get off this whole thing about what basketball players should do because some cats were criticizing me. Again, I think on YouTube, somebody was upset because a few weeks ago I was talking about how black folks need to stop worrying about athletes and stop trying to guilt trip or shame them into doing certain things for the community. Get off that bullshit because that's a very submissive, feminized mentality to have. Because whenever you see people talking about, well, LeBron James need to do something for the community and Kobe need to do something for the community. Those are dusty, aggressive, submissive dudes. That's a nigga raised in a single mother household who thinks like a hood rat. Because sitting around talking about what a basketball player should do for you, that's hood rat shit. That's something that hood chicks do. And the thing is, with a hood chick, a female, she can talk that because, see, she has bargaining chips. When a female sees a dude or an athlete get a big contract signed, she's like, oh, damn, such and such just got an NBA contract? I need to go down to All-Star Weekend and give him some pussy so I can get me a little piece of that money. See, that's how a, a hood chick thinks. Or, shit, if I go suck LeBron James' dick, I can get on Basketball Wives. Or if I fuck Kobe, I can get on Love and Hip Hop. See, that's how a chick thinks. That's why she's counting the basketball player's money. Because at least she has bargaining chips if she does happen to encounter a basketball player. Now you have dudes out here raised by single mothers. He has the same mentality as the damn hood rat. But the dude, the dusty nigga, he has no bargaining chips. He can't give up no ass. He could if he wanted, if he had the option now. If he had the option, he would do it. But he doesn't have that option. So the only option a dusty nigga has when it comes to counting a basketball player's money is to use the whole fake conscious pitch. Well, how come Kobe ain't doing nothing for the black community? How come LeBron ain't doing nothing for us in the black community? Now this fake consciousness thing has popped up where this nigga really don't give a shit about the community. He's thinking about himself and it's fucking with him to see another brother have paper. Again, that's aggressive submissiveness. He's talking big shit but he's still in a submissive position. Because, look, truth be told, let me, let me say this, man. Dudes, another man shouldn't count another dude's money. That's some of the most submissive things you can do is a, a grown-ass man counting another nigga's money. And dusty niggas do that. I heard this nigga got $100 million. He need to give 50% of that to the... You know, that's something that bitch niggas do. You don't count another man's money. Girls do that. Girls count dudes' money. I remember being on a date with this hood chick years ago. Chick from Compton. I was out with this girl from Compton. Cool chick, by the way. Just because she's from Compton. She, you know, she was a real cool chick. But every time we would go places, we would go out, we went to the movies, went to dinner and all types of stuff. Every time we go somewhere and I opened up my wallet, she would literally look in my wallet. She would lean over and look and see what I had in my wallet. Every time I would pay for something, she's like, how much you got in there? You balling, ain't you? I'm like, girl, get out of here. Every single time I opened my wallet, her ass jumped over to look in it. What you got? Let me see how money you got. Let me see how much money you roll. You balling the hell out, ain't you? I thought that was cute. That's cute hood rat shit. And you got dudes who do that. See, it's cute when a woman does it. It's sad when a nigga does it. You all up in another dude's wallet. You all up in another nigga's finances. Because if you up in another nigga's finances, that means yours is not in order. 
So you can't do that. That whole fake conscious rap, that's not, nobody's buying that either. And it's always a lot of dusty niggas using the whole fake hotep hustle. Because the thing is, man, look, when you want to get stuff done in the community, usually the people who get things done are the people with the hustle mentality. I ain't talking about the scam artists. I'm talking about the real true to the game smash down hustlers. Please don't mistake scam artists for hustler. I'm talking about a dude who has a real good money making endeavor going on. He's doing it on his own terms and the risk is at a minimum. But a real street hustling dude, man, there's a certain mentality that you have to have and you can get a lot of stuff done. This is why if you look in the history of the black community, many things that were accomplished and many things that were done and many people who held the community down were the street hustling dudes. The dudes in the sporting life. The Bumpy Johnsons. Go look at the movie Hoodlum with Lawrence Fishburne. That gives you an idea of how the street brothers and street sisters were holding the community down. And even now, if you see a lot of businesses in the black community that are like the, the barbershops or, the, or certain car de detailing shops that's black owned, usually a hustler owns a spot. Usually it's a dude who's a hustler. That's why you don't fuck with those businesses because the hustler get at you. And the thing is, this is why with the Hidden Color series, I come from that street background and I could get a film like Hidden Colors done because I took some of that street mentality and I put that in the game and I'll tell you why. Because the thing is, when you have that mentality, that, that hustle mentality, number one, you're not scared of the dominant society. Whereas a lot of people, they talk a big game, but they're scared of the repercussions of the dominant society. That's number one. Now, number two, a person who's square a square black person who has the resources and the finances. If he has resources and finances and he's working inside the dominant society, the first rule they have is don't you do shit else for other black people. That's the first thing they teach uh, an academic black person who works within the dominant society. That's the first thing they do. Don't you bring them other niggas around here and don't you use the money we gave you for them. So a lot of these so-called black scholars, they ain't trying to put together no historically accurate film for, for black folks that really challenges white supremacy. They're not doing that. A lot of the so-called athletes can't do it because they get their money from the dominant society. And then who do you have left? You got on a grassroots level, the hustling dudes and you got the hotep dudes. Now the hotep niggas, a lot of them, you know, they talk a good game. The fake conscious dudes, not all of them are fake, but a lot of the dudes on that hotep shit. When you broke, you talk a good game about what you'll do if you get the money. If you listen to hotep niggas, they always talk about, man, if I, if I get some money, I'll do this and I'll build a center and then I'll build a free breakfast program, brother. And then I'll make um, my custom made dashikis. And then, you know, brother's got all types of ideas and, and rhetoric when the money is not there. Because truth be told, if those dudes got four five hundred thousand dollars in their hand to actually do a film or do a documentary or just do anything. I'm just using the documentary film because that's something that, that I do. But if these dudes actually got the money in their hands, these herbal tea ass niggas, do you think that they would actually move forward with putting together a film or any kind of productive endeavor in the community? Because these niggas get that money in their hand. If they're not used to money, all that little nigga spirit is going to come up out of them. All the things that they've been longing and wishing for, the things that they've never had, that's going to start hitting them. You get a few hundred thousand dollars in your hand, niggas going to be like, oh, damn, well, shit, I can, I can start getting some bitches. I can get that Mercedes. I can start, I can get some clothes and the new Jordans. All that hotep shit is going to go out the window and the nigga spirit is going to come up with a lot of these dudes. 
So the hustlers, the dudes who, who are used to getting money, you ain't tripping on a certain amount of money that you get in your hand to do a project that's going to be something progressive for the community. You're not tripping on that money because you've touched that money before, just like with me with the Hidden Color series. There's a lot of money went into the series, but and I put a lot of money in it because I wasn't tricking it off on dumb shit. I'm not trying to trick the money off on chicks. I can I write books about getting women. <laughs> I've been writing books about macking and getting the ladies for years, so I ain't tripping on no ass. I got cars and all that. I've been around the world four or five fucking times. So been there, done that. So that's why the money can go to something progressive. I can put every dime of the money and then some into the project because I've been there, done that. But a lot of these fake hotep dudes, they don't have that mentality because these niggas are just using the hotep rap because they don't have any other rap to use in order to try to come up so they can do submissive things. These niggas want to be at the store just like women going shopping, getting red bottoms. They want to do the same shit. They got that same aggressive submissive mentality. So we got to be very clear on the real agenda of a lot of these cats out here. On my Ustream show, for those who listen to my Sunday's Ustream show, there was a dude who called up. He calls up a couple of times. And the dude called up a week ago saying, well, Tariq, you know, the problem with black folks, it ain't no money and all that old stuff. We don't need money. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do that. I disagree with you. What we need to do is just really study the Quran. We just need to pray for better blessings. We ain't praying correctly. The dude wanted to argue me down about praying. Praying and getting blessings. That was his thing. We need to do more of that. And the dude was just all over the place. Uh, and I clowned the guy and I kind of hung up on him. But then he called back a week later. Hey, man, you hung up on me. We need to we need to pray. We need to get the Quran. We need to understand the Bible. We need to we just ain't getting our blessings if we got more close with God. And then this nigga read a poem. I got a poem. I want to read to Can I read my poem? And again, this just codifies what I'm saying. Dudes with this aggressive, submissive mentality. We got dudes out here raised by single mothers. And again, your single mother, your mom, you see your mom going to church. Praying is the answer for everything because that's how women think. Women don't have the physical force or the physical aptitude to get out here and do certain things or to stand up to certain things. I'm not saying that as an insult. So a lot of women will rely on praying and doing things that are nurturing. That don't work for a dude. That doesn't work with the dude. The woman is the nurturer. So a lot of dudes have this mentality and you trying to be aggressive, but you sound crazy. Like, fuck all that shit, nigga. We need to get out here and pray on these motherfuckers. I'm like, dude, you being aggressive and submissive. And all this poetry reading, all that old Eric Benet moist fuck bullshit, that's not the answer. And truth be told, a lot of that mentality was not just created on the plantation, but a lot of that mentality happened in Africa too. When we go back to Africa and look at some certain societies, they would get into some of that aggressive submissiveness when they didn't know how to handle outside invaders. See, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, there were some African queens in certain parts of Africa who were running things, but we have to understand this. When the society is being led by the women and it's not in conjunction with the males, when there's the woman leading, the society is in decline. Let me say that again, and I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm not saying... That's um, in, in a shot at the women out here, at the sisters. But whenever you have women leading in a society, that society is already in decline. Just look at the black community. The black community in America is 100% matriarchal. 
what, what, 80 or 90 percent matriarchal, it's in decline. Because that's an unnatural balance. You don't have any real leadership out here. So we just have a lot of nurturing and praying. And that's not the answer. This is why we have grown ass men on Section 8 out here. That's what they're being taught. But let's go back to Africa, like I said. Because we talk about the African kings and the African warriors, but you had the women like Nzinga, Queen Nzinga, and all these people who were great, fierce warriors. These sisters were bad. But the thing is, when the society has the women out there in the forefront, they're in decline. And the reason why certain African queens were out there in the forefront is because the men were already defeated. So putting the women in the forefront, that was a last ditch ditch excuse. Okay, we need our spiritual leaders, which the women were the spiritual leaders to a certain degree. Let's put them out there and hopefully their spirits will protect us from these white people out here trying to colonize us. That was really the mentality. Let's go back to Egypt. When Cleopatra was out there, she was the last real Egyptian leader and, and that it was already in decline. He, Cleopatra is out here fucking with um, Anthony and Rome and all of these dudes. Caesar, she was fucking with all of them Romans and the society, the Egyptian society just went into total decline after that. But during imperialism in Africa when there was a lot of wars and when the Arab invasion came through and the European invasion came through a lot of the warriors they were being cut down because they were at a disadvantage because the Europeans had advanced weapons the Europeans had advanced weapons and they were out there just cutting people down And this was something new and foreign to them. They didn't know how to handle it. They had a lot of courage. The the courageous brothers, they were doing their thing, but they realized we needed more than courage to deal with these people because the Europeans weren't beating them because of their courageousness. They just had advanced weapons. The soldiers weren't that thorough from Europe. They were not thorough. They just had advanced weapons. That's why they were destroying the Africans when they went all into the African coast, into the African mainland. They were destroying them with advanced weaponry. And you had a lot of African leaders at the time. They were doing things like, okay, this is what we have to do. We're going to bathe ourselves with magic water. This is in historic records. They would say, okay, we're going to stop the the white man's bullets with magic water. And so they would put water on themselves. That was supposed to be magic. Then go into battle with the Europeans and all these Africans would get shut down and, and, and shot. They would all get killed by the thousands. Because again, they were taking on an aggressive submissiveness. They were taking on a submissive attitude, which is just relying on the spirituality. That's a very submissive thing to do when you're up against a very real adversary. When you're up against a real adversary who's doing real things, the last thing you want to do is just hide behind the spiritual realm. You use the spiritual realm as nurturing, but you get out here and you do real things. So in Africa... When the Europeans pretty much had everybody in a submissive position, they had what's called the Berlin Conference, where they decided to just chop up Africa for their own. All of the European nations got together. Most of them. I don't think Russia was at the table. I don't think. But a lot of the European nations got together and said, "Okay, well, Britain, you're going to have this part of Africa. France, you'll have this part. Um, Italy, you have this part. So they decided which part of Africa they were going to go into and colonize and they started to systematically go in going in and colonizing Africa just machine gunning people down cutting people down but there was one country that was never colonized there was one country in Africa that has never been colonized and that is Ethiopia Ethiopia has never been colonized by Europe now Europe occupied Ethiopia for about five years in like 1935 from 1935 to I think 1941 I think 
I think around that time, I might be getting my timelines mixed up, but I know it was, it was about five years when they occupied them. They didn't fully colonize them because they finally got them up, got the Italians up out of um, Ethiopia. But other than that, they never colonized Ethiopia. And what happened in Africa when the British and the French and the Germans, they went into Africa and they would fight. And many of these African nations gave them the business and they, they had less advanced weapons against the Europeans and they fought like men and they were very courageous and, and they even cut certain treaties and deals with the Europeans, but the Europeans reneged on all those deals. You know, they tricked a lot of the Africans. They said, okay, well, you know, we'll let's just stop the fighting Africans. Let's come to an agreement. And once the Africans came to an agreement and they let their guards down, the Europeans came over and took them over anyway. So they did all this all throughout Africa and then they got to Ethiopia. And when they got to Ethiopia, there was a brother there, King Menelik. King Menelik II. Now, Menelik II, he knew the game. He said, okay, look, what am I going to do here? Because they're, they're running game on everybody. He, he tried to do a little treaty deal with Italy because Italy was going to lay claim to Ethiopia. So King Menelik said, okay, look, let's do a deal. So they did a little deal, but then King Menelik realized, okay, they're trying to run game. What am I thinking? These people, they've been going through Africa, fucking everybody up, making everybody submit. What do they're going to do the same to me? So let me wake up here. So he woke up. Now he depended on his spirituality. He was all about his, the spiritual essence of his country, but he had to think progressively as well. He had to think like a man. He's like, I can't just rely on my spirituality. I need that to nurture me and give me strength, but I'm dealing with some real shit here and Italy is gonna try to come at me and take my country. So what King Menelik did, he already had an economic base because he was selling ivory. So they had a good economic base going. So what he did that the other African nations didn't do, he didn't say, I'm gonna put some magic water on me and put my queens in front and then have them pray. No, 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 no. King Milenik said, Menelik, I keep mispronouncing his name, King Milenik, Menelik. He said, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to play them in their own game. I'm going to do them like they do us. They do the whole divide and conquer thing. I'm going to do the same with them. Now, he knew that Russia and certain other European nations were beefing with each other over which African lands they were going to take. So he said, well, look, let me go holler at Russia. I'll holler at France because I know they kind of beefing with, Brit with British and the, the Italian folks. So let me holler at them and let me get me some guns. Let me get me some modern weapons. So King Menelik got 82,000 guns from Russia and France. And he got like 30 cannons. So he got his weight up. Other African nations didn't do that. He manned up. He said, fuck all this submissive praying and putting water on me. I'm about to get me some weapons in this bitch. So when Italy came down to invade them, the Ethiopians slaughtered the shit out of them damn Italians. They gave them Italians the business. They slaughtered them. That was the, the biggest slaughter of any European nation there. Sent them running back with their tails between their legs. Get the fuck off my land. He manned up. Didn't fall into that whole submissive role. And again, like I said... Ethiopia is the only African nation that has never been conquered. And you know what's very interesting about that? When King Menelik destroyed the African or the, the Italian invasion, many Western news outlets and, and newspapers, they would start portraying him as white. In political cartoons, they would portray King Menelik as a white dude. And he's he can't get no blacker than this brother. This is where that whole Thing where they try to say the Ethiopians are really dark Caucasians or they're really Phoenicians because they couldn't, the European powers couldn't come to terms with the fact that an African nation got in that ass. That's why y'all never hear about that. We might talk about that in Hidden Colors 4. Oh yeah, I'm already planning on Hidden Colors 4, by the way. I'm, that's, that's how hyped I am about Hidden Colors 3. 
But again, the whole point is that when you deal with the real threat, the worst thing you can do is try to deal with it from a strictly spiritual standpoint. That's a very submissive way to do things. And being submissive is not going to stop systematic white supremacy. That has never worked. And I talked about that before. Bending over with your ass open, that's just going to make people fuck harder. The more submissive you are, the harder they fuck you. Always remember that. And, and don't forget to get Hidden Colors 1 and 2 at HiddenColorsFilm.com, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget to get my shirts at TariqElite.com. Get my button-down shirts get my t-shirts at TariqElite.com and I'm going to holler at you guys this Sunday on Ustream. I'll holler. Have everybody tuning in on this wonderful, beautiful day today. Don't forget y'all, Hidden Colors 3 will be in theaters June 26th. It's going to be a two-day event. Most cities is going to be that Thursday, June 26th. A couple of cities is going to be June 27th. I know in Chicago, it's going to be June 27th. Also in Atlanta is going to be June 26th and June 27th, but in all the other cities is going to be that Thursday, June 26th. So the cities that Hidden Colors 3 will be in will be in Dallas, Los Angeles, Oakland, Chicago, Atlanta, Philly, D.C., and New York and Detroit. All right. And you can go to HiddenColorsFilm.com and we'll have all the theaters and dates. We're getting all of that confirmed before we put everything up, but that will be up later on this week when we get everything confirmed, ladies and gentlemen. Hidden Colors 3 is going to be a beast. It's going to be a doozy, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Let's see who we got on the phone. We got a lot of folks calling here. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, this is Ronnie from Pennsylvania. Hey, what? This is Tariq. This is Tariq. What's your name? My name's Ronnie. Ronnie or Lonnie? Uh, Ronnie, with the R. Okay, Ronnie. So what's on your mind, Ronnie? Wow, well, I'm so happy. I got you. I can't believe it. Um, I just wanted to know, why is it that a lot of younger black guys seem to be happy with um, not, not working, um, just being on getting government assistance and not really trying to make a good life for themselves? Is it because um, they just lack motivation, or is it just because um, of the society, you know, how they basically made the black man feel like they're worth nothing? Because it just seems like a lot of younger guys that I run into, they just don't seem like they're motivated. Okay, so you're saying there's a lot of guys on government assistance? What kind of government assistance can guys get? Well, I'm, I'm not. I just live in the fast lane. B -b Bottles every night, whatever you like. Because I do things. And you know my niggas keep that thing. Because a nigga want to act strange. But this ain't about me, girl. It's all about you. And I ain't just running game. Running game. I ain't running game. Ooh, that's that 2 a.m. by Adrian Marcel. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite, also known as King Flex, also known as Tariq Nasheed. And I'm ready to chop up game in this bitch. We're going to chop up some real good game on today's show. We're going to have people call in. The number is 818-850-5404. That's the number to call in. And we're going to chop up some real good game on today's show. We're going to talk about what I call aggressive submissiveness in men. And I'll explain what that means after these very quick messages, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll be right back. Jazzy Hair, it offers the finest quality in virgin Brazilian hair extension products that allow individuals to have that full body of hair that they've always wanted. Their hair is 100% unprocessed and it's top of the line. And they have great customer service and fast delivery. Check out their website at jazzyhair.com. That's J-A-Z-E-E -E hair.com. Or hit them on Instagram at jazzyhair. Or on Facebook at jazzyhair. Or call them at 832-901-2603. 
K Soldier, the t-shirt brand inspired by ancient mysteries and modern style. Sign up for their t-shirt subscription and get a new exclusive shirt delivered every month automatically. Every shirt comes with a magazine that doubles as a poster which describes the story and the history behind the design and the detail. It also comes with free stickers. Sign up for the t-shirt subscription right now. Tariq Radio listeners use the coupon code KFLEX and get 50% off on your first month. That's CaseUltra.com. Again, that's CaseUltra.com. You are now tuning in to the king of games, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize. All day, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tariq Elite Radio Show. And I'm your host, Mr. Tariq Elite, also known as Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have I'm just saying, like, I know guys that are really talented that could do so many things. And instead of that, they're just happy being on government assistance and like, I, right. I just don't understand. Now, now, I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm agreeing with you a little bit but the whole government assistance thing I just want you to be very clear on what government oh. assistance can a dude get what what government assistance are you, are you talking about okay um well I have a couple of friends that are very talented um as far as like in music I, wait, 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 wait. I understand that you keep saying that you know people who are talented. I'm asking you a very specific yeah. question. What type of government assistance are dudes on? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, some of them are on Section 8. And but I, dudes I, can't I, get I, Section 8. What, what, dudes can't get Section 8 unless they're, like, okay. uh, unless they're handicapped or they have some kind of disability. But dudes okay. generally... Maybe, maybe, they're, maybe they're claiming... Can you get, I'm just asking a question because I didn't think you could either. That's why I'm a little confused when they tell me they're on Section 8. They, must, they must be claiming some kind of disability. I think that's the only way a 